Well, do you remember Black Lives Matter co-founder Patrice Cullors? She's a self-described Marxist, whom critics accused of hypocrisy when she was revealed to have bought four high-end homes for $3.2 million. Well, she now says real estate is more than just an investment. She wrote this on social media, quote, Thank you, NPR, for highlighting the history of racism inside the housing market and why black home ownership has always been a way to disrupt white supremacy. Chris Bedford, I come to you. This is not an unusual thing. A commissars back in the Soviet Union got rich. The people who are always in charge of the system get rich. It's Some are equal, but some are more equal than others. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is also not surprising, given how shameless she's been, when her entire ideology is that you should give me what you have, everyone should give me what you have, you're all bad, and I'm, and I'm good. If you believe that and you think that you can just take from people to give to yourself, which she's pretty explicit about, then this is going to be the fruit of that. And I guess, uh, I guess she picked out some nice houses with all that money. I don't think America has gotten better for it. So you know what's really confusing about this to me, Emily, is that capitalism and, and the American dream and moving up is something that is open door to all of us. And if we want to talk about, you know, going forward as people of color, the proof is really there when you go for your dreams. Do you really need the BLM organizer to preach about where you buy a house? Or, or, or is she maybe absolving herself of her own guilt after all the criticism for why she didn't move into a black neighborhood and lift that neighborhood up with her tax base? I don't know. I never asked that question because I think you go where you want. Right. And we've talked about it before that we all celebrate capitalism and absolutely celebrate her right to build up a $3.4 million portfolio. That's amazing. It's just really surprising when everything she talks about and that she's a self-supported, uh, self-proclaimed supporter of Marxism, uh, then it just rings hollow. And it rings hollow as a founder of the Black Lives uh, Matter movement when apparently all of the local branches never saw any of the over $12 million that nationally was poured into the organization. So there's a lot of questions that it raises, and I think she keeps deflecting. For example, when it was published about her portfolio, not the addresses, but just that it existed, it existed uh, she said that people were being misogynistic and racist against her for even talking about it. So she's yeah. not having the conversation that she keeps asking others to have. Which is difficult because there were some within the uh, within her own organization who were wondering, well, can we just get some receipts on where the money did it come from? Just so, just so that they would know their own investigation. So what does this have to do with white supremacy, where she well, buys a house? That's just it. I think that she came under fire for owning all of this real estate and then her reasoning is to lump it into what is a real problem that we haven't seen a steady increase in black home ownership. That's a legitimate point, but it seemed that she was using that legitimate point to cover for her own scandal. That's my intuition. But that being said, you're exactly right about capitalism. You know, she came from very humble beginnings. She writes about growing up in a housing project and having a mom who works 16 mm -hmm. hour days. She's the American dream. So right. let's celebrate that American dream and not call ourselves trained Marxist as she has called herself previously. I've often thought the same thing too about others who come from tough places and get to someplace fantastic mm -hmm. uh, and and that being its own sort of billboard for how far we can really get to Tommy your thoughts yeah that's evidence of the American dream so but she wants people to feel like they are indeed victims but furthermore because of her comments about disrupting white supremacy and having black home ownership then I would expect her to be a vocal cheerleader of President Trump's opportunity zones because that really goes hand in hand with a statement that she tried to make makes to cover up her own guilt and the money that she's made off of her so-called activism so at the end of the day I would be curious to know what she feels about opportunity zones but you know she's really doing a disservice to her community and to all communities if she is indeed living that American dream and she's been able to attain that through capitalism in this wonderful great country of ours you should be preaching that and empowerment not victimhood and not everybody is racist but at the end of the day what do you expect from somebody who runs Black Lives Matter the organization very separate from the movement by the way I'm always curious as to why we didn't see more organization on the ground if that was really what she was wanting to do during the height of the protesting no. but that's a whole different show <laughs>